All right. Last time on Midgard, uh, the convicts have made it to the second half of the Golden Citadel for Yunder and have explored <clears throat> a few mostly barren rooms within. And to remind everyone, the main halls of this part are covered in long and thick and certainly dusty uh, spider webs that hinder movement slightly. There is a, uh, you guys have found a statue to a altered version of uh, Svarag or Voland, depending on how you view it. A large petrified giant spider. Uh, some mead, of course, and uh, a few other rooms where there was a mechanical spider <clears throat> that ended up getting caught in a pot by Prudence. As you guys kind of met back up in this sort of central hallway, uh, Tendi went a little further south to kind of see try to see past a smaller ballista and Tendi obviously you can see uh, large gr uh, large amounts of light emanating from further south and you also see that there's a point where these uh, spider web covered floors stop you also notice a small statue just beyond the ballista as well as Lee Austin you in between two rooms you see a uh, silhouette of a figure standing completely still uh, as the light kind of pours in through that, that small crack going upward. And as Tendi kind of goes south, you hear two things simultaneously. You hear the slamming and echo of a large metal door. And you also hear a hiss, like a guttural hiss, like a, but not, uh, not anything that you've probably heard before. And often you see <clears throat> for a brief second, something go by your limited field of vision, uh, far to the south that it's too quick to be able to see what it was, but you can at least tell that it was moving quickly on the ground. And we'll open it up as the echo of the slamming door finally uh, begins to obviously fade and quit echoing through the halls. I remember last time Tendi used the mind speaking to call the Austin and have and gather everybody. Mm. But instead of doing that, because the skitter skittery uh, distracted him, uh, not distracted, but caught his attention, he would look to the others in the, in the room with him, so that would be Poppy, Sin, and uh, uh, Patches. Sorry, uh, the dragon distracted me. Um, he would try to get their attention with a gesture and point with a sword towards Tendi, like as if like go to Tendi, but he would start making his way down this little alley by himself. Okay. And you can make you can go ahead and start making your way. What else is uh is everyone doing? Uh Sin uh, takes what Leaf says and just goes ahead and heads down towards where Tendi's at. As he gets there. How are you doing, Tendi? Everything going well? Can I tell if the door is in front of me, right? The sound that I heard? Uh, the doors, yeah, they're, they're down to the south, like in this direction. You can, in fact, I think okay. from where from where you're at, as a matter of fact, you can see uh, the two, um, 
don't know why it's not showing light on you. But you should be able to see at least one statue. And uh, next to that statue, large statue, is uh, a set of double doors. Ooh. Tandy kind of puts a finger to their mouth uh, to sin and kind of like points forward at the doors. And nods. Okay. Who's next? And all the often I'll say as you approach that uh, silhouette, there's a door uh, just to your left if you're looking at the map. Uh, I've tried to indicate them with white lines in front of the doors if that helps. Um, but the the figure that is standing there looks to be wielding a, a short spear and has uh, armor on, but is not and not moving amongst the flickering flames from the area below. Are you talking about this one? Yep. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll wait till a lot of people go before I do. Okay. Who's next? If not, we'll go over to Prudence and Mara who have uh, a very angry mechanical spider. Well, I mean, it's a mechanical spider. You can't really tell it's angry. But you got something that's making a whole lot of noise in a pot. She sees that people are grouped up, but then she also saw Lee Austin go down on his own. And so I think her first thought is that she shouldn't let anyone go alone, even if they, they might have not wanted her to come. Uh, so she's going to try to... I'm locked. I can't leave. You're locked? <laughs> I'm staying here, I guess. She's going to try to nothing. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and... Is it? Speaks grabby hands at Austin. It doesn't. Sh it doesn't show that you're locked. Stuck in the spider webs. I'm stuck. My, I can move. The light. Can you move now? Yeah. Okay. Can I anyway. I want to move. I think I'm going to leave Wicket near Patches, and I'll pretty much tell him. Keep an eye on everyone, and if anything happens, tell me, okay? Wicket nods. It's two large eyes, wooden face, in approval. The Austin. What's happening? He, he frowns down at her and puts a finger to his lips and nods down the hallway to, towards the, the figure. Poppy, having no dark vision, sees nothing. You don't see anything, but I think you guys are close enough uh, from where you're at where you can hear footsteps in, like, as if you've, like, you know when you hear a the sound of uh, not skin but and not fur, but sort of like a leathery, uh, like pad padding as as they're walking, you can hear kind of a and like uh, some scraping, a very light scraping of like dust and rubble. But then further away, you hear another hiss. Sound like you said it's guttural. Yeah, I don't know if you heard me do it before, but it's. Oh no, I didn't. That was cool. Anyway, <laughs> it, it does it. It doesn't sound like anything I've heard before, or like. You could, you could try to do a uh, a nature check. This is going to be just from sound alone. It's going to be, I would say, uh, hard. To be able to do, but you can certainly roll it and see. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. You can guess. Your best guess is it sounds reptilian, but that's all you got. 
I think it's a lizard. <laughs> we have some scowls, but no one's. Patches will just kind of mosey on up behind the Austin and uh, Poppy. Howdy, folks. Oh, hi. There's a yeah. lizard down there. Bitch. Yeah. The Austin nods and then nods down the, the alleyway towards the figure. figure. Uh, real quick, let's go over to uh, Prudence and Ma uh, Mara. What are you guys doing? Um, Prudence is sitting on top of the pot and grinning up at Mara with a very satisfied look on her face. Wow. Well, we hear the sound. From where we are uh you heard you you absolutely heard the slamming of a large metal door i would probably say you may have heard the tail end of a of a hissing noise um but it was i mean with all of the commotion and the shuffling around and talking it's kind of from your where you're at you know that you probably would be the furthest furthest away from it so mara will look up Act kind of like in the direction of the noise and then look like prudent and be like see what I tell you you shouldn't have trapped that thing you believe that my spider has caused the random noises around us I think it's pissed something off besides me are you pissed off yeah about the spider did you want to catch it I didn't want it to be caught at all. You don't need to be catching animals. We were explicitly told by Beckett to bring back creatures. Not a creature, it's a robot. All right, well, sometimes is a bit, you know, of a bit of a wibbly wobbly sort of discussion we can get into later, but I do think we are being left behind. I am bringing the spider. Okay. Prudence picks up the pot and carries it under her arm. Mara tries to grab it. <laughs> Prudence will roll too fast for you. You don't know that. <laughs> I'll roll for it. Roll. <laughs> roll, bitch. All right, so wait. for your love instead. So wh where is it you guys are going? Uh, I believe we are going to go meet up with everybody that's leaving us. Like, we have time to rest and I leave my lady behind, right? Uh, you haven't, you, you, you haven't rested since you cast her. What was her cast time? An hour? Ten minutes? An hour. An hour. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got plenty of time. You just, you just okay. casted her not that long ago, right? Oh, okay. I, I guess I got confused about the short rest conversation. Yeah, she wasn't uh, she wasn't active during the short rest. It was afterwards, right? It was it was only when you yeah you summoned her when you uh, when you got over the other side of the of the uh, thing. I'd probably say like maybe twenty minutes have passed. You still got plenty of time on it. Okay. Um, I'll tell her to follow the others then. Or come with me. Okay. You should have control, so all you'll need to do is just yeah. take her wherever you want to go. Uh, as you guys start to head back, um, Mara and Prudence roll me a uh, perception check. Uh, pa Sin and Tendi roll me a perception check, but with disadvantage. Same with... Uh, Patches, Poppy, and Leofston. Disadvantage. Perhaps. Disadvantage. Not not. Six. Yeah, not for Mara or Prudence. More than any of you. Good. 
Okay. Tendy. Jeez, Tendy. Whoa. Tendy sees all. Okay. Tendy uh, got that Tendy, Tendy vision. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lee Austin, you, uh, you would have heard this, except for you hear something else. You you specifically hear two hisses, and one of them is now starting to reverberate off the uh, off the walls behind you down that hall. The other one seems to come from where it previously was. Um, Mara and Tendi. Tendi, you hear uh, you hear that hiss too. But you also pick out what Mara, what you and Mara hear. You and Mara hear a quick scuffle of solitary feet. Um, probably, uh, Mara, this is in the direction back where you were, uh, down places you have not gone. But it is just a single solitary pair of feet that, um, and you hear like a. a muted as uh, before absolute silence yeah but what what does poppy see the, poppy here though poppy uh, you hear you hear the fluttering of w- wicket's wings in your ear as it darts up and then when you look it darts back to where it was <laughs> and it just looks at you and goes Did I see? Uh, did I see which direction? Did I see? Did I hear which direction? Is it in front of me? Behind me? Uh, the hiss or the uh, scuffle? Um, either. I got a twenty-four. The hiss is off uh, to the southwest. The scuffle is to the east. Okay. Be- behind you to the east. Yeah. Leaston's gonna squeeze past Pat, like look towards the direction where he heard the reverberating, and uh, try to see if he can see anything down the hallway. You're gonna go where? Just like right here, and look. Oh. Uh oh. Poopsie poopsie. <laughs> has left the building. Oh, he's he's back. I came back inside. I had a smoke. Okay. Oh, okay. Y'all have a dart. Uh, okay, so yeah, you walk back through the hall, and the hallway kind of, again, it is, uh, the, you can see a point over here where the, uh, it stops, the, the, uh, webbing stops. You also see it, I believe, right here, right there. Um, obviously that five foot, uh, gap where the, uh, silhouette stood, uh, doesn't have webbing as well. It seems like anything that's larger than or smaller than ten feet wide uh, does not have webbing in it. And you could tell that beyond that uh, that still figure, there's a large open area where you saw a statue previously, and there's no webbing there. There is a lot of rubble and like various uh, bits of just crushed and uh, crumbled stone. Only Austin kind of makes a disgruntled sound. He makes a disgruntled sound and kind of gestures for Poppy and and, uh, Pat just to keep exploring down the hallway. He's going to watch their back. Okay. Okay. Well, here's what we'll... Here's what we'll do. Go ahead and select your token and roll initiative. We'll do, we'll do actions. We will re-roll when com if combat were to start, but that way we'll just kind of go through everybody. I love this system. It's so good. I am 
very impressed so far with everyone clicking on their token and click and roll for initiative. Did I lose dark vision? No, you still have it. Oh, mine went away too. Sometimes it bugs out and you just need to move your character like one space over and back. Yeah. I can see. Yeah. Uh, the best best way to do it is go back one square the way you came, step for back back forward into where you were at. Um, okay, <clears throat> that's everybody. Um, -doo 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 -doo. so Prudence, you probably see Mara perk up for a bit and look kind of back the way you came, uh, but you and Mara technically are kind of first and second. So what do you do? Did you hear something? Good insults tomorrow. Yeah, I, I think so. Is there a big band music playing in the back? <laughs> oh, can you hear my sons? I'm sorry. So it's kind of. It's pretty much theme music. <laughs> Follows her everywhere she goes. Carnival music. <laughs> What don't judge what she likes and what she dislikes. <laughs> uh, so Mara kind of squints and says, I, I think so. Uh, she's going to tell uh, Ezel to go back and check it out. Right, while she does that, I can see Sin and Tendi, right? Uh, you can see. Yeah, you can see who you see, yeah. Are they acting like they're trying to be quiet? Um, that's uh, that would be a question for um you guys. I would say that Tendi is is definitely like not moving. And one ear is pointed in the direction of the one sound, and the other ear is pointed in the direction of the other sound. Oh, okay. And they definitely still have their finger like up in the air, like wait, 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 wait. Like a pointer dog. Sense <laughs> of body language is uh, kind of just ready for something to happen. Another hiss off in the distance. Coming from the southwest. This way. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Prudence will move forward. Tell me how far I can go. Uh, you can... You are... Uh, at this point, you can uh, probably go one more. So you see... Uh, you see a site that is a bit unsettling... The still uh, figures that are, at first you probably think are um, statues, but they're oddly placed. And they're all dwarven, except for one. One seems to be a taller uh, by about uh, a foot and a half and kind of elvish features. But there is no color to any of them. They are all stone they all look very lifelike, and you see randoms, random um, crumbles of stone on the ground, uh, and you're pretty sure one of those rocks looks an awful lot like a hand. Okay. Uh, prudence. This is a weird question. If you take away one of your senses in D and D, do your other ones get heightened, just like in real life? Uh, no, not necessarily. Well, why not? Um, because if I close my eyes, I don't smell any better right now. So I don't know, like. <laughs> you can take a shower, Stinky. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Curse is foiled again. Uh, so I guess Sin and Tendi can, they see Prudence take a horrified step backwards. 
Um, she turns around to look at them. And then she stays where she is. The Another thing to note is you, you obviously saw uh, two statues of a bald man in robes with an arm out um, and one kind of at his side. And uh, in between those two statues on red carpet squares uh, was a large set of double doors that are probably about 12 to 15 foot high. Um, and you see, like, there is a small, like, there's, there's a crack, like, underneath the door. You know how a door would, has, you can look under, yeah. Um, you don't know how well you can look through it. All you know is there is bright light coming from uh, there that kind of, it shows a little bit of light onto the red carpet in front of it, but obviously doesn't go far enough. Um, but you can tell whatever's behind there is way brighter than anything you have seen thus far with any of the lights. Well, now I'm intrigued and I step forward again. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go real quick to uh, Tamara. So, Mara, you send your... Uh, lady. Your, what was Isold. it? Isold? Isold. Yeah. You send her off, uh, off into the direction? Can yeah. and you can um, see? Can you see through her eyes? It didn't. No, I don't. No, I don't okay. think so. Can she communicate with you telepathically? Yes. Was that a yes? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay. So then, yeah, she can kind of. She'll let you know what she sees if you want to send her out. Okay. How far can I send her? Uh, you can send her to the end of the hall if you want. Oh, I was going to send her in this room. That oh. That just didn't go into. Yeah. Uh, in, in this room, uh, again, as it was previously described, there's three rows of uh, stone pews. Uh, leads up to a statue of Voland, god of the forge, travel in the mountain. There is a decorative tower shield and a hammer sitting atop small pedal tool pedestals to either side of Voland and in front of them two extinguished uh, braziers notably the red rug on the floor that you've seen perhaps in other rooms very similar uh, is vastly different because it has been entirely destroyed with ribbons of the rug strewn out among the floor and on top of uh, some of the pews the base of the statue also suffers from minor nicks and cuts and uh, that is currently what you see So, the sound didn't come from inside the room. Uh, you don't you don't hear the sound anymore. You would probably, you'd, with your uh, perception, you'd know it wouldn't have come from the room. Okay. It kind of echoed a bit off of the, uh, the halls beyond that. Okay. Well, I would send her further down the hall, but I'll let somebody else go. Uh, no, you, you can send her at least to the end of the hall. That would be fine. I can at least describe that to everybody. <clears throat> All right. She's at the end of the hall. She, uh, she tells you uh, the hall itself obviously cuts off with the webbing, and there are uh, two sets of doors on either side of this hall that kind of match up with one another. And at the end of it um, is a kind of darkened uh, room that uh, opens up into what looks to be a... Um, a, a throne room, a regal royal room. Okay. So, uh, we then go to Lee Austin. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, well, he isn't going to do much until the other two move. Going to be watching their back. You're going to keep an eye over uh, in, uh, down the hall to the left? Yeah. Like, as soon as they start moving, he's going to kind of backwards follow them. But until then, he's going to be watching this area. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Well, then we will then go to patches. All right. Let's quit beating the devil around the stump. Patches is just gonna go down this hallway. You uh, so you come up to you come up there first. You come up there first, right before the statue. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can tell that that obviously is not a. Uh, you can tell that that is in fact a statue, and you would have to squeeze by it in order to get past it as it is not going to simply move out of your way but you can certainly end up on the other side once you get past that statue i would love to do so okay uh you see uh, the room similarly similarly and previously described uh for a brief moment you see a figure over here uh dart away from your vision Out of prudence, I think our fellow is over there. Uh, Patches is going to chill till somebody else's turn. Okay. That'll bring us to Poppy. Okay. Not exactly understanding how telepathy among uh, between a caster and their familiar works yet. Poppy's going to think... Hmm, I should really tell Wicked to, like, go with the other group, maybe. Yes. And, and report back. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he'll do that. Um, he'll stick next to... Sin? Sin and Okay. Uh, Sin and Tendi, you see a... Uh, you see Poppy's small new, uh fairy feathered uh, or fairy winged uh, friend flitter over and kind of hover in the air around head shoulder length um, and is kind of what what do you want it to do do you want it to just look want it to look around um, I just want uh, him to keep an eye on things and if anything uh, happens with that group to let Poppy know, and he can do that via telepathy. Okay. Um, and Poppy is going to follow uh, Patches, like we often said to do. Okay. Um, it, it turns around, uh, Wicket turns around real quick to you sin uh, and kind of hovers in your face for a moment uh, it reaches out a hand as if to offer to try to touch your face I just allow it okay Again, it just just eyes, no face, no like no mouth or anything. Just a wooden mask with two eyes. It leans forward and nods its head or cocks its head to the side and just gently touches your face. Uh, make a charisma saving throw. Alright, give me a second. Uh, just so you know, I sent you a whisper. Uh, the way to reply to that would be... Uh, forward slash W space GM uh, to whisper back. Forward slash W what? Uh, forward slash W space GM and then space whatever it is you want to reply with. 
Can I whisper it to others? You can, in fact. It's just forward slash W space their name. Their character name. <gasps> and and uh, I, I don't believe I would be able to see your guys' whispers between each other, but... This would be the equivalent... Or this would be the equivalent of if we were at the table, I would either tell everyone to leave the room or I'd walk over to, uh, to Maya and whisper in his ear. <laughs> You're so popular all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's like I gave you guys a brand new tour and you're like, oh, goody. Let's break it and make daddy buy a new one. <laughs> uh, while, while, you, while you respond, though. Um... Actually, your turn's next, so yeah, we'll wait for you to respond. After, just so, just so everyone knows, after Sin is going to be uh, Tendi, and then we're going to be back to Prudence. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh... Poppy, you get uh, a moment after you send uh, Wicket over, and you kind of follow up behind Patches. Uh, Wicket's voice enters your mind. Red Eye, alert. He focused. Red Eye, alert. He focused. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sure. I'm sure I need something cool. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. <Good> job. <laughs> we go to uh, Sin. Okay. Uh, Sin, Sin will, will uh, kind of just nod at Wicked and uh, move out of his way and Slowly come this way, but then once he gets to this obstruction, he's going to uh, kind of bolt it and end up here. Okay. So after you vault over that and land, you see again, you see the statues, some broken, um, and the, the, the large opening scene uh, area before you. And as you land, you hear um, kind of back... Uh, echoing off the halls, you feel like to the northwest, you hear a uh, kind of closer to uh, Lee Austin's direction. You hear a. Is anybody going to tell him? <laughs> what? I was like, oh, I'm having a stroke. I must have muted him completely, but no, we can't. Whatever I, it is you're doing, we can't hear it. Your microphone is too oh. to pick up mouth noises. I gotcha. Okay. Well. I'll, I'll, save, I'll save it. I'll save it for when we meet each other, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, by the way, this sound was. And I'll do that. Ooh, we almost heard it that time. Like, we get, we get that, like, you get real close, you get real dramatic, and real, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Imagine going... Like a tiny dragonfly fart, and then nothing. Imagine, basically imagine a hiss, but you're rolling your R's uh, with your tongue. Like, so your tongue's just bouncing in the back of your throat, like... I can't, yeah, it doesn't work. I already established that I can't roll my R's. Sin is going to uh, grab his axes and he's going to ready an action. If he sees something happen, he's going to throw that axe at it. Okay. I will say, if it makes you feel any better, I am planning on eventually using my voice mod thing that I paid for uh, as a possible soundboard to include things like animal noises and various things. Um, but I gotta take time to figure that out. Angie can help you. Angie can help me. Uh, okay. So you land over there. We'll go to Tendi real quick before 
We'll give everyone another round to do, go on. Uh, Tendi immediately, um, so I've got one thing behind and then one thing forward. So since everybody's kind of looking forward into the big room, Tendi kind of turns their head back and looks towards where Mara is and kind of points in that direction. And Mara probably can't see it, but Tendi kind of mouths like the... And they will skitter back to the safety of the big, beautiful center lady. Mara, did you hear that? Again? Uh, I don't know. Did I? Very open-ended. I'm gonna say I did. Um, so yeah. I'll, uh, kind of... Talk to her. And stand over her so she's protected. How if I listen here, does that, do I hear anything else coming from that direction anymore? From that direction currently, not yet, no. Uh, this also is a good point to ask how, on the soul, uh, how, what is their vision? What's their sight? Sandy? No, the, uh, the little angel token, the Yasolda. They would have the flaps hanging out for sure. I think so too. It gives the illusion of arms. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, Alright. No, not you, Dave. Are you asking me how how she can hear? Uh, no, if it if if it has any uh, vision, like like dark vision or anything. No, she does not have dark vision. Okay. Since, oh wait, that's why she does for sixty feet. Okay. She also has a fourteen on passive perception. Fourteen on passive. She's a okay. Well. Yeah, I don't think I was supposed to keep Yeah, like I said, it, when when the next 30 minutes pass, uh, we'll probably not it's be able to... We can do what we want. Right. Um, I was wondering what the sound was. It sounded like an old man. Well, she's getting up there. But she's definitely a lady. The, lady. But yeah, Tendi, you currently do not hear anything from that direction. Um, Tendi is going to pull out their uh, mandolin and just kind of have it at the ready. Okay. Uh, let me see. Tendi, you and Mara, you you hear the voice of Yasolda in your head. Uh, and Tendi, you hear this. Um, you hear more footsteps scurry uh, in the hall back in the direction that you were at. Uh, meanwhile, Mara, in your head, you hear Yasolda go, uh, small running man, ran, ran into the room. Ran into the room? Ran into a room. And he was doing running man? <clears throat> Small running man ran into room. Okay. Um, okay, so she's going to... Um, I mean... My instinct was to, like, could tell Cindy to go away? Or, like, tell her to go the other way? And then, like... Protector, but Tendi's a big Tendi will do that. Tendi's a big girl. Okay, uh, so Mara will tell Tendi, um, I guess I can roleplay, that's the thing. Uh, there's a, there's a, a man running, he's into a room back there, so go join the others, I'll, I'll check it out. Okay. And... Mara pulled out a scimitar 
And then she's gonna walk down the hallway. Okay. And Tendi's gonna move forward through the hallway towards like where where everybody else is. I have a question about a spell. Okay. What's what, what's the question? So I have a message. Yeah. Um. Actually, I no longer have a question about a spell. But I've done enough. I will wait. Okay. Uh, Prudence, before you, before your turn, uh, another loud, another louder hiss echoes through this large open area as you can see at the edge of your vision, something emerging from the shadows over in this direction. It is... A large, slithering, but with two or with four legs, uh, and many spikes along its uh, front and over its uh, head. A about the size of a large dog kind of slithers out. A uh, a creature you may or may not have seen before, uh, with its mouth opening wide as it lets out as it finishes its hiss and obviously it is aware of you guys you are also aware of uh, of it so as we will uh, at, for now we are going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the current um, I mean unless we want to keep this initiative for uh for combat, which all I would need to do is add theirs. Or add it. Add the easy test. Yeah. Okay. We're already at the, the top of the initiative, so. Yeah. Uh, no one gets, in, in the way that you guys have moved around, you don't really get the jump on them. They also don't get the jump on you. Uh, so, we will go ahead and have them roll... That seems about right. All right, we'll do sending. Okay, so Prudence, you see this thing begin to emerge, and that's and that's when, uh, that's when it begins kind of scanning the open area. Um. I am unprepared to fight what I think I know what this is, so I'm, like, scared to do anything. <laughs> uh, I want to take... One, two... I want to go behind this statue. Okay. Oh, I can't move. Oh, wait, I figured it out. That's 25 feet. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to prepare an action, is that what it's called? Uh, hold an action, yeah. I'm gonna ready my daggers for if it comes near me. Okay. That's it. Sounds good. Mara, we go to you. You do hear that loud hiss. Um, you don't hear much else, but that was the loudest hiss that you've heard. But you are at the uh, end of this hallway, right? Or you're at the bottom of this hallway right now. Yeah, I feel like it's a bad idea to be so far away from everybody else. What? I'm committed. She thinks she can handle it. Um, okay, so, let's see. Hazel can move. Oh, shit. She can fly. Oh, I knew that. Um, okay. So she can... Okay. So 
So I'm going to send her down as far as she can go. And she's up in the air flying. And she, she's going to tell me what? She passes by this door. And for a brief second, as she kind of sees that that is the only open door in the doors that she's passed thus far, she sees and conveys that there is the uh, uh, small small man, white hair. He's gone. And you can't... Uh, and She kind of like... And then looks into the rest of this uh, throne room. And uh, it seems pretty elaborate, but it seems that the... Uh, the person that is, or the being that is around here, um, was in this room, but is no longer there. Okay. So what, uh, so you sent, so you sold it, what, what do you do? Okay, so I'm going to decide that one man who we can't seem to track down is not a um or one person that we can't seem to track down and who obviously is not trying to find us um is not of importance so i'm going to go back and join the group okay since we're in combat just make sure to remember that each square that's webbed is uh double your movement speed so if you move 15 feet three squares that's technically 30 feet Oh, okay. Just imagine that every square is ten feet. Okay, she was flying, so okay. I'll go. Okay. Uh so that was your forty, right? So I would say it was a bonus action to send you soul to up, but you still have an action. You can dash, which means that you can move again, which is another four, uh, 40 feet. Or in this case, 20 feet. Okay. Perfect. Okay. We will then go to Leofston. I imagine he would hear that big old growl. Oh, oh yeah. So of course he turns sharply and curses because like trying to be smart, helpful man. That's clearly one of the first people from combat. So he starts booking it down this hallway. Like this would be fun over here until he just told me the rules about spider webs and fuck that. So. He starts booking it down, so I guess, are, does this count as spider webs? Um, no, you can go forward. The only the only square you would have to worry about in this instance is when you are passing by the statue. Um, it That would cost uh, ten, basically two squares of, of, of movement, so. Okay, so he's going to do a dash, so... So you can move up to uh, 60. Or 50 at this point because of uh, the statue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to count that, yeah. I mean, I don't have to, but that's what you just said, right? Well, it's, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50 would be the square right in front of uh, Patches. So, uh, yeah, sword, shield, and hand, we often books it and gets in front of friends to protect them, puts the shield out. Perfect. Sounds good. Patches, you you definitely were kind of front row as you heard the uh, this cry from this beast. Yep. All right, let's get a look at it. Patches is going to go his full 35... Um, then I am, I'm 
gonna shoot it. Gonna shoot it. Okay. Yep. Good old longbow. Uh, 14. So as the arrow flies, it looks like it is going to hit him square or hit it square in the uh, in the neck as its head starts to come down. But it just uh, bounces and glances off of its thick hide. All right. Well, ain't you ready to make no fence? Then uh, Jolene's can go five. As Jolene nears the creature, what does Jolene do? Uh, Jolene is just getting ready and uh, being all uh, angry and intimidating looking. I mean, if, if Jolene has the option to not look at it in the face, I would appreciate that, but I understand. <laughs> do you know uh for uh, i'm just saying do you know or does uh would it know would jolene know what it is um i don't know i mean I, we were talking about basilisks earlier right mm -hmm. spider. so i mean jolene she's got an eight intelligence not stupid okay 14 14 wisdom I will. Uh, fire removed is a basilisk from Jolene. How far? I, I mean, Jolene's a dragon. It's a basilisk a dragon. Uh, a basilisk yeah. is not technically a dragon. I would I would assume. What's uh, the difference between a lizard and a dragon? That would be a wonderful uh, nature check to to ponder the differences while a <laughs> vicious creature is attempting to probably do you some bad. Um, yeah, I'll say in this case, uh, Jolene at least gets the sense that uh, looking at it is probably not wise and at least communicates that to you as it quickly averts uh, Jolene's gaze, but it kind of, um, but she'll, she'll be where she's at for right now. Yeah. Her, her, she knows her job there is to is to slow that thing down while the rest of us get into position. I got an 11 on my nature check, by the way. So you, <laughs> the difference between a dragon and a lizard? Uh, a lizard is uh, can really not get any larger than a Komodo dragon or a basilisk, but uh, or if there's also lizard folk. Um, which are humanoid sized lizards dragons themselves um, would you at least know that they would kill you immediately if you thought that they were a lizard oh, that was a very rude thought I had <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so you uh, you shoot and you miss so we will <laughs> uh, anything else for your turn uh, no that's it we go to poppy Okay, so I'm going to move in here. Hold up, first of all. I... Where is Patches? How do you... S Maybe it's because I don't see that you do see. Never mind. I'm, I'm outside of your, your light. I can't, I can't see, see the, the, the creature at all. So. Yeah. Just follow, follow my voice, Poppy. Follow my voice. Okay. I think I'm gonna go near the fire. Did you? Uh, just okay. Based off of context clues, does Poppy know what's going on? <laughs> like, uh. I see the guy, but like. May make a uh. Make a nature check. Did you already make a nature check? I've made several ma nature checks. Um, the first nature check to discern what the bas basilisk was and the fact that it can petrify people was very high. And then the one to see 
what uh, the creature's, the sound of the creature was, was very low. So, you know, like, actually it was like an 11, I think. But, well, yeah, going going off of of the sound, you got a fifteen, which wasn't enough. But if you are, if you might be able to manage to see it, then perhaps you would, uh, perhaps you would know exact. You would confirm your suspicions. Okay. Well, she saw one in the fire, like earlier. Well, yeah, but she can't idea. see. She can't see the current one. Mm. Okay. Um, and and the one in the fire wasn't making any noise. I. The sizzling. Okay. Um, so, Poppy will just focus, mm, no, Poppy's going to, uh, use her action to use speak with, like, to up speak with animals. Just in case it is a lizard like she thinks it is right now. Got it. And then that's her turn. All right. We then go to it. Uh, as it begins to crawl out further from, from this area, it is going to move... 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. Jolene can choose to take an opportunity attack. That would be with a disadvantage for trying to avoid looking at it. Uh, does a 10 hit? 10 will, 10 will miss. <laughs> Poppy, you, uh, as you're like, you're waiting to get a glimpse of this creature. Uh, it certainly rushes out from uh, from the shadowy rooms and hallways beyond, and it makes uh, makes good time. It's not able to get anywhere or do anything, but as you kind of begin to uh, gaze upon it, I will go ahead and give you a nature check with advantage, but also I'm going to need. Uh, Lee Austin and you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. I'll do the nature check first. 18. Okay. That's just hitting my constitution? Yep. Constitution saving throw. Uh, you, uh, before you click that, Lee Austin, you'll want to go to saving throws because you actually get plus you, it, it, yours would be, would be a five instead of a three. Okay. Um, it's it's uh, right there uh, next to dexterity to the right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So just click click the word constitution up there. Yeah. There you go. Because <laughs> you are blind, blind you, shit. you are proficient. And so you don't want to deny your proficiency bonus to uh, to a check that you are proficient at. Okay. Oh wait, can you see <clears throat> this? I, I I can I can look up and see it. I don't I don't try <laughs> to. Yeah. Sorry, I, I keep trying to get. Our Discord is a turd. No, you're good, and, and you're on a tablet, so it's fine. Uh, Poppy. You recognize the scaly skin and the spikes and the teeth of a creature that you just had seen previously inside of the brazier. Uh, the brazier. And as it clicks that this is, in fact, a basilisk, you recall the... Uh, your memory recalls what they are known for, which is their petrifying gaze. And as you look at it, as it begins to rush you, you feel a change. Do I get, can I like yell something out? You can. You currently, um, as you kind of remember, shit, this is a basilisk. You look down and are you flying? Or yeah. are you, you're flying? Mm -hmm. You meet the ground immediately 
uh, as you land, but you land on your feet, and your feet begin to slowly kind of creep up in and change from flesh to stone. Not entirely yet, but you are restrained, uh, and you are but you are able to call out currently. Nobody look at it. That's, that's, that's where I say. And then, uh, yeah. Okay. We then... So what we're going to put... Not on the torch. The torch is not restrained. That would be silly. Unless... <laughs> Unless... She can go wherever she pleases. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So it moved. It can't not do anything. Uh... Sin, you hear Poppy yell out, Don't look at it! And uh, she goes from flying into the air to just slowly, like, not not where you're breaking your ankles, but just kind of lands normally, but then her feet begin to start to change, and she's kind of looking at her feet. Uh, Sin will look down, thinking uh, his hand on his axe and then he comes over to about right here kneels down puts his hand onto the ground as he concentrates and he's going at that moment a bunch of uh, small insects start to come out from underneath of his cloak but these are bioluminescent and they will swarm the area next to where the basilisk is basilisk, basilisk is this is very fire. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to cast fairy fire. And I'm assuming that's going to be basically be in an area to cover the creature. Area just to cover the creature. Okay. You can, if you can click on that and put that on there, it's got to make a save, right? Yeah, it's got to make uh, get the dexterity check. Might as well go ahead and put its there it is. sheet over here. There we go. I'll say 13. 13? Okay. That's a uh, dexterity. It gets 16. Okay. Uh, noticing that that didn't take, he will come down behind this brazier and uh, he'll tell Poppy, "I'm I'm coming, Poppy. Just just hold on." Okay. okay, I'm not going anywhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> giggle, giggle, giggle. All right. Uh, that is going to bring us then. Oh, as you... Uh, do you avoid... Since since Poppy mentioned to avert your gaze. Or to and avoid looking, looking at it. toward the basilisk. He's looking away. Got it. But he's, he's like, he, he takes his axe and he positions it to where he can see the axe reflection of the what's going on behind him. Okay. It's a little bit distorted, but it'll work. Uh, now that er everyone is relatively within uh, shouting range, Mara, you probably hear Poppy's scream to uh, don't look at it. You will need to let me know the very first thing that you say during your turn is whether or not you look at it or not. Uh, Alright, we will then go to Tendi. Hello, Tendi does not look at it. <laughs> um, are, are those braziers lit? They are, yes. <laughs> Job, eh? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. Um, God, 
iPad and I can't see where it is because I'm not looking at it at home. I mean, you can't see, you can't really see anything from, from there. Uh, it seems like everyone's focused on at least looking over um, somewhere north of where that pond, that little pool of water embrasures are. Do I know anything about Basilisk? Is that a nature check for me? Uh, I believe... Like anything that, that we don't, haven't already discussed? Well, Pop, Poppy, did did you educate yeah. them on uh, what was uh, in the book? I think she did tell everybody, but I do know for sure that she told Tendi about it during mm -hmm. our uh, uh, text role play. Okay. Yes. Um, in this case, uh, you're trying to find out things about it that you don't already know. Um, I'd say, like, the petrifying gaze is the horror story of all basilisks. Um, you can be able to tell that they have a thick hide, and they are, uh, they end up eating the, the people, or the things that they turn into, uh, petrified stone as a form of, of, of sustenance, and they are pretty beefy. Hmm. Okay. Mm. okay. They are not, however, very fast. That's weird and fun to know. Okay, cool. Um, is range of... Um, are all of these stats you guys looking at it? Uh, they're in various states of, of facing in in this room that you that, of the ones that you can see. Uh, Tendi is going to yeah, that thing, huh? gonna like hang out here, kind of trying to wedge themselves between the ballista thing and this statue, which isn't going to be too helpful, and um, give. Are, uh, no, I'm sorry, give Prudence a uh, bardic inspiration. You shall be bardically inspired. Hell yeah, baby, let's go. Um, let's see. We will. I want to go ahead and use. Fun because Katie doesn't know anything about Basilisk at all, but Tendi probably knows more. Like I thought it was a snake. I guess it's a lizard. Oh, there's a lot of versions. Like some Basilisks are like chickens with like dragon tails and stuff. But it's 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 a variety. Yeah. Don't talk about my tabaxi like that, Jesus. Um, I'll I'll at least right let room with you. I'll at least let you know that um a bit of a bit that you can recall is it is. This uh, basilisk is a monstrosity, which is uh, essentially defined as, uh, let's see, let me see what it actually says. They are monsters in the strictest sense. They are frightening creatures that are not ordinary, not truly natural, and almost never benign. Um, you have probably heard monstrosity, the, the term monstrosity tied to uh, products of terrible curses like minotaurs or uh, ex magical experiments that didn't go well, a.k.a. Uh, an owlbear. So that is what you know, at least about monstrosities itself. Okay, I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay, uh, we will go to another hiss. As you can hear this hiss not coming from the mouth of the basilisk in front of you. Um, Jolene sees another come from a little bit further north of the uh, kind of stepping out into the webbed hallway. Um, 
I would assume. Let me see. Let me just make this just in case. Okay. Uh, we then go to once before we go to prudence. Give me one second. <laughs> nice. Nice. So I need to do this. Um, Mara, your uh, Isolde mentions that she hears footsteps but cannot see anything. Okay. We then go to um, Prudence. Is there a way to flip a coin in the game? Uh, technically, yes, I guess. Like, there could be a... Oh, yeah, you would just roll a d2. And one would be one uh, one option. One would be... Two would be the other. You could slash... Or forward slash r space one d2. You could also roll a d4 and just say 1 and 2 is 1, and two, 3 and 4 is 2. Yeah, you could roll any okay. die and odds or heads, evens or tails. Number 1, I'm going to jump on the basilisk's back. Number 2, I'm going to run for the door. Okay, Prudence steps out from behind the statue. And then, not looking at the basilisk, I mean, she looks at its foot to guide herself, and she sprints at it, and then tries to get on its back. Okay. And she's going to do that with two daggers. She's going to try to sink them into its back so that she can, like, hold on. Okay. Well, I will say from where you went, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were right here. So you went five. And then to get where you're at, it's 45. So that would be a dash. Because you have, what, 40 movement speed? Yeah. Okay. Um, I will say you could certainly jump and leap over it to be able to get behind it. But that would take both of your... That's you. Can, you can't go through the statue. You went up here in front of patches, and then you went over. Is there a mobility you can use to, like, step of the wind do something? Uh, you could you could use step of the wind. I think that doubles your jump distance, but why is my oh no hold on you're good. My um character sheet's like invisible. <laughs> So would doubling my jump make me able to land on its back? I'd say if you spend the key point for uh, for step the wind, then then sure. Okay, I'll spend the key point for step of the wind to take two daggers and land on its back. Okay. Uh, so you're able to, uh, kind of rush out from the, the statue and get a bearing of where it's at. And as you avoid your gaze, you take a few steps forward and then just leap in the air. And without even much of a, a running start, you sort of just, you know, uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, kick your way, uh, across the, uh, the air as you come around <laughs> to the back of the basilisk and you, uh, managed to grab a hold of it by uh, by trying to jab daggers in it. I won't let you. I won't let you make the. Or you can make your dagger attack. 
So I'm assuming you're it's tempted a, to stab it, unless you're trying to grab it, which you would use, you would just use your good old handies. Do I roll two or one? Uh, your first dagger attack with your main hand uh, misses. You can roll with your other one. There you go. Damn. So, so with your offhand, um, what what happens is since you don't have two weapon fighting, which is something that uh, Sin has. You would be able to roll the damage, the 1d4, but you would not be able to add your dexterity. So you can click the damage for dagger. We just have to remove uh, the extra amount. So you rolled a 1. But you also get an extra 1d6 of ice damage from Jolene. Hell yeah, thanks baby. I rolled a d6. Four. Okay. So it takes one piercing damage and four icy damage. So my um, my reasoning to do this is I want to try to be able to manipulate its movement. That's why I'm not just straight up attacking it. Okay. Well, you would want to grapple it uh, in in that particular instance in order to be basically restrain it. But when you're using your daggers, it makes me think you're trying to stab at it. No, I'm using the daggers to hold on. Okay. Yeah, you're current. You are currently holding on with the left dagger in it. Um, I'd probably say next round you might want you can make your uh, grapple check to try to grab a hold of it. Okie dokie, and she's done. Okay. Uh, all right. So. And just so you know, so uh, the 21 that you rolled on your dagger still hits be er, er, uh, because that was the lower of the two results, the 24 and the 21. If you're not looking at it, it's going to be harder to grab and harder to stab because you have disadvantage not being able to see it. If I'm behind it, though, I should be safe, right? Not necessarily. What do you mean not necessarily? You don't got no eyes in the back of its head is it a mom you are correct but uh unlike us that can only look so far back they can certainly whip their head around like an owl not like an owl but like they have the eyes on the sides of their head so it's a little bit easier for them to look around jordan if you are within jordan. 30 feet of the basilisk and you are looking at it it can force you to make a petrifying gaze i'm gonna saving force throw. you to make a petrifying gaze don't fat the GM. He'll do that thing. <laughs> I'm just teasing him. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will go to Mara. There seems to be some conflict. Um, so I'll start, off by, I'll start off by saying that I don't look at it, but I'm not even in the same room. So, um... I'm gonna have Ezel come back. She's flying, so she can come all the way back to the beginning of the hallway and keep an eye out for the the person, place, or thing. Mm -hmm. The na the the verb, the noun, the noun. The, I like the noun. It's the noun. The noise. Yeah, the noun that is making the noise. Um. So. I, Mara has put the information together. Well, I guess, can't, do I need to do a knowledge check to see if she has put it together? Because she's not in the room with everybody else. Um, I, I mean, she knows that there's a petrified spider. She knows that there was a basilisk in the brazier and from you hear, the yeah, other room. And she heard, don't look at yell, it. Don't look at it. So do I sure. know what it is? You know that when you get in that room, you shouldn't look at it. But, but can yes. I, can I roll to see if I know exactly what it is? You you can put you can put two and two together after all of that. Yes. Okay. You don't have to roll. So I know it's a basilisk, um, and I know that this this spider, this giant spider, has been uh, petrified by it. Would it be a bad idea for me to try to reanimate the spider? And would that be possible? Um. Since you're thinking about. Things that are petrified. 
I will, I will give you this bit of, of knowledge. Thank you. If a creature is petrified by a, at least from what you, from what you would believe and or told a basilisk, the only way to end them from being petrified is until, uh, until there's uh, a use of a spell called greater restoration or other magics. The other magics uh, you don't you don't know because a lot of it can be just there might be a home remedy for it or but you know the most commonly used uh, way to not be fully petrified is by greater restoration and that is you kill the basilisk that petrified it does that bring them back nope no because it's with it's, okay. it's 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 them it's their own constitution that failed to where they have uh where they end up turning to stone. Okay. So I can't... I know I can't do that. Then. Okay. So... I can't do much from afar, so I guess I'll just try to get closer. So I'm gonna... dash again. So... One, two, three, four, five, Oh. Okay. I guess I'm done. Okay. Uh, was that a dash? Yeah. Okay. All right, Lee Austin. All right. So, how does throwing thing say for the idea I have is to grab Mr. Man over there and chuck him at the the basilisk. Uh, Mr. Man over there. The statue? Yes, sir. Uh, in order to... That would... I guess that would be, like, an improvised weapon. Um, so, obviously, you'd have to go over and chuck it. You'd have to be strong enough to pick it up. Um, so, improvised... I would say if you were to hurl that thing uh, and and hit, I would let you do 2d10 damage to it. How strong? I mean, like, Leostin has what? Big bulging forearms. He does. Uh, he's got very, bulging strength. Very sweaty palms. <laughs> <laughs> um... Let's see. It's going to be a struggle. If you are able to pick that up, you are going to probably move pretty slowly. Um, so just a, just, just a picture. 510, you get to the statue, you grab it. Then it would be 20 to at least get out of that hallway. And then you'd have to throw it. 25, 30, or wait, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet over to uh, the basilisk. So, no. I would say it, let's see, 5, 10, 20, 30. 30 would get you 5 feet closer to it, and it's possible. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, do it. Okay. You go run and grab the statue. I th I think that in itself is uh, a pretty inspiring idea. So you have, ins I'll give you inspiration if you don't already have it. <gasps> um, now, you pick it up and it is heavy and you can move... Uh, as far as here to be able to throw it. However, your eyes lock briefly with the basilisk. Make another constitution saving throw. Uh, you 
can't move any further. Not not because not I mean not only because you're kind of out of uh, movement if you're wanting to at least still throw it, but you can feel the tips of your toes and the balls of your ankles grow cold, numb, and then almost you can't you can't feel it. So you uh, can I will let you go ahead and chuck it. Um, remember you do have uh, inspiration if you want to use it. I do. Okay. Is that gonna be a string? Um, it would be a yeah. It would be like a uh, probably have you roll. Um, let's see. What would be a similar thing? Lob throwing. Yeah, like a javelin. So yeah, use use your strength. That's fine. It won't use your strength modifier. It's going to do the 2d10, but. Okay. You, you, you yeet the statue. Uh, kind of lift it just barely over your head and kind of shoulder toss it over. And it lands on top of the, uh, the basilisk and kind of. Uh, and crumbles once most of it hits the ground, but it does uh, roll 2d10 damage. Watch where you're throwing. Don't jump on its back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it when Mom. Didn't she jump on the back of the fucking robot we fought too? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love luck. It's what I do. Maybe if we made smarter choices. <laughs> I think I think he's doing the dice. I think he's doing the dice move too much. Okay. You know what? Fine. Maybe I'll stop jumping on things. I think I think he's doing the dice move. No, I like it. It's your style. You do you, man. He's doing the dice move too much. That's a the bold move. <laughs> You've done it three times and you should know that people, you, you do it and then you complain when people almost hit you. Stop doing it. No. Or stop okay. complaining. I will be me. Um, okay, so Leofton, you deal uh, you deal a good amount of damage to, to it uh, as the rock crumbles and as you start to turn to stone, you, a, th- a brief thought goes through your head. That was a person that you threw. That was that was a real live at one point in time dwarf that you have now thrown and destroyed as you yourself begin to start to turn to stone. The the continuation of the thought process is well if someone picks me up and throws me, I'm gonna do more damage. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and add Jolene because Jolene wasn't added. I think that we Austin needs to take a stain. Thanks, what? <laughs> wrong, wrong system. It's a vampire joke. I understood that reference. <laughs> Jack comes out of the shadows. Hey, nice job. I like what you did there. <laughs> uh, I would think so, Jack. At least once a day I'll have <laughs> oh. Uh Patches, I'm going to have Jolene go af- uh, before you if, if you want. Because uh, Jolene didn't okay. go last turn, last round. Uh, no, she did. She just missed. Or, she, she oh, okay, yeah, she didn't, like, attack or anything, but she, okay, yes. Yeah. Sure. She, like, ran up to it, but couldn't reach it? Yeah, she yeah. just ran, but that was it. Um, okay. Uh, so is Jolene taking this action and then the next one? Well, I, I, I've got Jolene, and then it's you right after. Okay. So, Jolene will run up behind it. Not that that matters. Um, and we'll attack it with a bite. 22. All right. Have Jolene roll a constitution saving throw. Doesn't it only take effect if... Oh, I guess it is. Okay, yeah. Um... Yes, Jolene will roll Constitution. Uh, 11. 
Uh, okay, so first it takes four piercing damage. Second off, Jolene is restrained. As she, as Jolene's uh, limbs begin to keep her rooted to the ground where she is currently at. Y'all, if we surround it with statues, uh, it can't move. <laughs> Checkmate, atheist. I too played that mouse game on the old, old Windows 95. <laughs> okay, uh, so Patches' turn. Mm -hmm. uh, Patches is gonna go here and then shoot it. Okay. Maybe I'll hit this time. Uh, 15. Uh, a 15 does hit. You also realize that from where you're at, it you don't uh, as you as you're looking at it, you don't feel your uh, your kind of core uh, start to slow itself down. Uh, so you can go ahead and roll damage. Yeah. Uh, that would be 12 damage. 12 yeah, damage. Far away. Don't get close. It's a bit too late for that. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Now, does Jolene take another attack or or another turn? Well, I, yeah, I'm trying to remember how how that went because she went and then and stopped, but the basilisk had its one turn to run out here. Mm -hmm. So I'll just have I'll just have her go before you, and that's because uh, like she otherwise she'll be doubling up on her turns for this turn. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Just remember to remember to add her to. Uh, Initiative. Sorry, she it, she always goes directly after me in initiative. She doesn't actually roll initiative. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'll have her go before this time. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. We will go to Poppy. Do I get a turn before I have to see if I turn stone? That is a great question. So, uh. Yes, at the end of your turn, you'll need to make another save. Okay. Since I'm already turning to stone, I don't see anything, any reason not to just look at it. So I'm going to look at it. And I'm going to cast Blindness Deafness. And try to make it blind. Hmm. All right, and what's the Constitution save? Seventeen. Uh, can it had not do that? <laughs> so, if I had my turn before to hex it, I could have hexed it for Constitution, and then like you know. But you could. Done a lot of things, but. But but you couldn't see it. Nope. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. So long, guys. I'm going to use my inspiration. <laughs> All right. You are. Uh, you, you no longer have your inspiration, but you use it as you, f you, f you fight it off. You dig down deep and inside it, you hear a voice. It is not, it's not wicked. It's can't tell if it's masculine or feminine. It is just a. A worldly voice that just says no and you shake off the creeping uh, stone and your feet are now back to normal How however that doesn't say that, that doesn't make it immune doesn't make you immune but you are no longer restrained with your feet turning to stone You also know that that was not the voice of your patron. Okay, God. <laughs> uh, you do. Oh no! Since the save was at the end of your turn, you can't move or anything. But but that's yeah. you're good. Okay. Uh, we go to Bartholomew the Basilisk. Uh, let's see. That's 
5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, you hear the hiss that I wish you could hear if my microphone was working really well, because I've been working on it for at least 30 minutes, but it's okay. Uh, you hear a hiss. Maybe don't do it away from the microphone. Yeah, nope, doesn't do it. You hear another guttural hiss that sounds super cool, uh, behind you, Prudence. (laughs) Uh, all right. We then go to, it can't, it it is moved as far as it could. Uh, we go to sin. Okay. Uh, sin looking in his axe. Um, is he able to see the second basilisk come around? Sure. You see another body. Yep. All right. Sin is going to... Grab his bedroll. And he's going to roll over here and without looking at the basilisk, he's going to try to bag this damn thing over his head. So you're going to avoid looking at either basilisk. Yes. Uh, I will allow it. It wasn't the first thing you said, but I will allow it. You will basically roll... Um, Roll to grapple it, uh, so that would be an athletics check, but is with disadvantage because you cannot see it directly. Tag him and tag him, baby. Let's see what happens, I guess. I believe in you more than I've ever believed in anyone. Nice. All right, and so it needs to make an opposing. What's it better at? Because it can choose athletics or acrobatics. Which, I'm going to tell you right now, they're not skilled in it. They're just using whether it's strength or dex. All right, so 14 versus it's 6. So you have it. Where are you at? G, where are you at? G, grappled. You have it grappled, and you essentially have it uh, temporarily blinded. Right? It's going to bear down. Yep. Come. Okay. That is pretty good. Uh, Good enough for inspiration? He already has inspiration. Already have inspiration. We, We get more than one. Do we? Yeah. I mean, you gave me one and I used it. I still have one. Okay. I used it for that con save. I will. Uh, I'll consider it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Don't ask me for inspiration. I'll. I'll give it if I give it. I'm just joking around. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was really good though. So we will go ahead and go to. Uh, oh, that was your turn, right? Move and. Action that to grapple. Turn. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tandy. Those doors at the south are closed, right? Yes, but a bright light, very bright, shines underneath it. Oh boy. How big are them doors? Uh they're you know, they're about seven feet wide, uh double the length tall, so about fifteen feet high. Uh Tendy's gonna go to the doors and try to pull one open. Baby. Where were you at? Uh, the doors. Uh I was here. I'm using speed line agility so I can move sixty feet. Okay, got it. Alright. Trying to pull this door open, specifically the one that's on my this side. side. Okay, got it. Because it'll open outward and then shine light on two vessels. Right. Uh, sure. Go ahead and roll me a strength check. 
Oh, does it have to be? Yeah. Are you sure? Very sure. <laughs> your paws get around what would be like the handle and try to leverage your your legs and you're you're trying to pull and with the mandolin in one one hand with the other one you are not able to be able to pull it it is a it is a it it is you know it would be a cold metal door however it's not hot to the touch where it would burn you but it is certainly warm as it is absorbing some sort of heat. And from behind that door, you can hear various hisses and uh, pounding of metal on metal. Okay. I did my two things. On. Okay. All right. Uh, we go to... Bartholomew the Basilisk, who cannot see, um, he's going to attempt to bite at Sin, which means that that is with disadvantage, as it is trying to w wiggle its way out of being held, but it can, it's, can still attack while it's grappled. Uh, so it's going to try to bite. 13 is probably not going to hit. Nope. Okay. Um, it will, it's movement is zero, so it can't do anything else. Uh, before we go to prudence, let's try it again. We go to, uh, or, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, uh, Mara in your head, you hear your soul to go, I don't, I don't hear anything, I don't see anything yet. And we go to Prudence. Um, what's the current status of the basilisk that I have? The basilisk that you have has taken significant amount of damage from being shot stabbed bitten by a small dragon um and various other states it is not looking good some black ichor or like dark greenish blue blood seems to be seeping out of some of its uh, uh exterior onto the floor beneath you um you have the it's it, you have it stabbed if you want to grapple it so here's how grapple works grappling is one um is essentially an action right that would take up your attack action having it grappled is one thing which means that its speed is essentially zero uh and has uh certain let me see conditions 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 so grappled would mean the speed is zero and it can't get any bonus to its speed, um, and the condition would end if the grappler is incapacitated, which is you, meaning you're you're at zero, and it also ends if an effect removes the grappled creature from the reach of the grappler. Some, if they were to teleport or if they were to be hurled away <coughs> by some spell that pushes or anything like that. Um, to be able to uh, restrain it uh, would be like a second a secondary grapple check while you have them restrained. Their speed is still zero, and then attack rolls against that creature would have advantage, and theirs would have disadvantage. Um, they also have disadvantage. They would also have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. I would say if you are attempting to basically pin its head down where it can't look at at and it can't whip it around, you would make a grapple check this turn, and if you succeed at a grapple check your next turn after that, you would be able to have it pinned the way that you uh, were trying to convey, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to take two turns to pin it. Okay. I'm just going to punch the back of its skull. Punch it! With with the three punches. God, what's that called again? 
Flurry of blows. Flurry, Flurry of blows. blows. Yep. And spend another key point. So after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you want to go ahead and attack first, like normal. Eleven to hit. And don't forget, you have bardic inspiration. I have bardic inspiration. Does no? Does an eleven hit? Do you, do you use your bardic inspiration or no? Well, I'm just going to guess it doesn't hit, so yes. Yeah, because I, if I tell you it does or doesn't hit, that you wouldn't be able to go, oh, I use bardic inspiration then. Okay. So. I use, I use the inspiration to hit it. Okay, so you roll a 1d6. Uh, is the bardic inspiration die that uh, Tendi has linked down below. So that would be a 15. 15 does hit. Um, a few things happen. A few things happen at once. First off, you get to do your uh, 5 plus. Uh, what's the 4 from? Uh, I don't know. It's always been that way. Mm, it says 1d4 plus 3 bludgeoning damage. Yeah, so why is it doing four? Oh, okay, I got it. The four is as if you critted. Um, so that that would have been... It, it rolled it just in case you needed to go off of that one. And so, and that is max damage, which is four for your uh, punch die. Okay, uh, So it's five, and then plus uh, the 1d6 from infused strikes that Jolene is using her reaction for. Um, nice. nice. So ten damage. Nice. All right. Now make a Constitution saving throw. Before I use flurry of blows. Yeah. It's not gonna. It's not gonna stop you from using flurry of blows, but. Yeah. Three. Since you're kind of sort of laying on it on its on its back, so to speak. Um, or crouching down behind it, you notice that your your uh, the balls of your feet and toes begin to <coughs> and stone begins to crawl up your hooves. Right? You have hooves? I got feet. Metal got, feet. Yeah. So your your metal feet begin to turn a dull sheen and lose their shine as they change from metal to uh, to stone. Um, and then, yeah, go ahead and do your Flurry of Blows. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Sixteen. That's a hit. Go, you can go ahead and roll it again since you're going to be doing two two punches. Twenty. Perfect. Nice. So go ahead and roll damage on both of those. Whoo! Good lord. Good with that. That's some that's some good ass damage. That's max damage right there. Uh, okay, it does not look good, and it is trying to wriggle its way out uh, out from you, uh, as it is seeming to fight for its life as it has a tiefling uh, on top of it. Uh, anything else? Mm -mm. All right, Mara. I should go in this room. Um, I, Myra is going to rip a piece of cloth off of her crop top and wrap it around her eyeball. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm doing my best. And then. Make fucking spider webs, man. I don't know. I don't really want to dash again, but I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do from here. Um, I mean, I guess that's my only choice, right? 
Uh, I mean, from there you can see. Uh, well, no, I mean. Well, I can't see shit. <laughs> Never mind. You can hear the sounds of combat, sort of a uh, sort of a ways away. Okay, and then I'm gonna call Ezold to come back a little bit more before she can go. I really just want her looking out behind me. Yeah, I'm not I mean... as invested in whoever is running around back there right now. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Um I mean you know, how far am I on my next turn? I guess so, I'll move I got I don't have anything else to do. Yeah, I'll so say like you could I might as well just move. Well yeah. I'm out of the so if I dash now I'll move forty, right? So I'm out of the spider web. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can feel that your hooves are no longer tripped up in the sticky webs of uh, the floors before you. Maybe, just a, a thought, uh, consider not running right up next to it because you want to stay a little bit away, it seems, to not take its case. Do I know what its weaknesses are? Um, Chaos, punches. Death. Death, like, death is the greatest weakness. We do know it. Well, but I mean, like, burn up. as a creature, as a creature, do I know what it, what it's like? Uh, susceptible to. You know, as far as as far as if there were things that would be that it would be susceptible to, I probably I would have given it. Okay. Um, it is it is deathly afraid of dying, but it doesn't have any sort of other. Uh, Weaknesses, but it also doesn't have any anything that it's immune to, so that's good. Um, Daisy, I don't know what you want. You're gonna have to use your words. Woof. Yeah, I know. Pretty much. Heavy panting right now. I was going to say, depending on how far your range of spells are, you could attempt to cast a spell. Um, yeah, I'm looking at them. Um, I've only got like... But it would be... 30 feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it would be a disadvantage because you're not seeing where you're targeting it. You're just kind of... Yeah. I hear fighting. It's probably something over here. Okay. So I think I'm going to... Yeah, that wouldn't get me anywhere, but... Okay, so I'm going to go there. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Did you do something wrong? No, 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 no. I'm, uh, okay. I'm looking up, uh, I'm looking up something. I'm going to turn, uh, I'm going to turn good old statue boy that fell on top of the, uh, basilisk. I'm going to turn him to stone rubble. I made a mess. You made a mess. <laughs> uh, okay, so you move uh, up ahead a little bit. You you aren't obviously looking at anything, but you do hear the sounds of combat obviously closer. Um, if let's say if there's if you get your next turn and you want to uh, try to cast a spell into combat and you can't see, all that would be is at uh, disadvantage because you're kind of just gauging your ears of of where of where you think it's at. Um, if you roll a nat natural one, and uh, then it's possible you might hit an ally. Sure. But we Good will go. Everybody. Uh, we will go to Leofston. You uh, can take your turn as normal. At the end, you'll need to give me another Constitution saving throw. Does restrain do anything with my movement? 
you uh yeah restrained means that you cannot move uh your speed is zero mm -hmm. attack rolls against you have advantage attack roll uh, your attack rolls have disadvantage and you have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws okay well uh Leofson will um set aside his sword and pull out one of his hatchets from his belt and do a cool little flip in his hand before throwing it at uh, this basilisk. Okay. In order for you to grab grab something, you would uh, you wouldn't be able to put away your sword. You would just drop it on the ground because that's a free action to just drop something. Um, can he put can... it in his shield hand? Like kind of just pass it like into his fingers. Sure. Have to drop it. Sure. I that 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 would be fine. I mean, it's part of a it's part of an action to uh, a part of a move action to pick it up, anyways. But okay. would I still be would I be able to do both? Like put like change hands my sword and pick up the axe. Sure, you just uh, wouldn't be able to use the shield. I would assume for yeah, the turn. Right now. Yeah. Does it hit? What'd you roll? 16? 15. 15. 15, but I have a disadvantage, right? Right. 15 does hit. Roll for damage. Uh, it, as it's trying to whip around and, and, uh, and fight the tiefling who is punching the back of its head, uh, it doesn't see the axe come flying and it and ends up uh, its head and body uh, fall limp and as it hits the floor. Well, Allison breathes a, a sigh of relief and then... <sighs> Oof. And then turns to stone. You are... Yeah, you kind of quickly see the, the stone creep up your body at a faster and faster pace uh, and you, it, what, what do you do before you can no longer, uh, do anything? Uh, I guess he would put his sword hand, sword into his sword hand, so that way, like, you know, when he goes about a holla, he's got that, that's gonna get him there. Uh, he's gonna look up and say, what I just picked out, he's gonna say, Backcraft, and then the star, the stone's gonna take him over. Okay. No, we don't understand what he's saying. All right. We then go to Jolene. Yeah. Uh, Jolene can't do anything because she's restrained. Um, so she's just gonna stick her tongue out at the other basilisk. Um, and then Patches will shoot the other Basilisk. Okay. Uh, that would be a 15. Does that still hit the other one? 15 does, yes. Okay. Uh, that would be 8 piercing. Nice shooting, Jolene. <laughs> Alright, it takes, uh, yep, it takes 8. And then, you know what, why not? Patches is going to move over here, because i got a range of 600 feet on that longbow, so might as well get a little ways away. Well, si Damn. 600 would be shooting with disadvantage, 150 would be with not, not disadvantage. I got sharpshooter. There you I don't, go. I don't even know the word. <laughs> I don't even know the meaning of the word. Okay, very good. You are definitely a, uh, a long-range boy in sort of close-range quarters. Uh, another loud hiss and tink, uh, like metal on metal noises, echo and reverberate behind the door. And uh, Tendi, the bubbling, uh, like the thick bubbling noise you hear is not louder anywhere else than right behind this door. We will then go to Poppy. looks over at Lee Austin. Lee Austin? Lee Austin, no, 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 no. And she walks and 
sort of stands in front of him and looks, okay, stands like a little closer so she can actually see the guy and looks um, at the basilisk. Okay. So you're looking at the, you're looking at ba- Basilisk boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she's going to cast uh, the Eldritch Blast at it, which I'm going to twin. So I do two of them. Okay. Oh, I wish I brought Wicket over here sooner so I could have advantage on the first roll, but you know, it's fine. Okay. Nine doesn't hit, I'm guessing. Uh, let me check something real quick. Advantage. That's, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, your attack rolls have advantage because the creature is blinded. Okay, uh... 21, 20, 21 does hit, yes. Okay, first blast is 8 force damage. Okay. The second blast is a 7. That is Now that is going to miss. Yeah. Um, do I have a... I should have done that, but I didn't because I'm dumb. That's fine. Um... Okay, um, I did things slightly out of order of what I wanted to do them, but, you know, I got, I'd say excited, but, like, the opposite of excited, more like, uh, I need to kill this thing because it hurt my friend. Anyway, I'm stepping back again. Okay. And then that's Sound. my turn. Sounds good. We go to, oh, that one's dead. Sin! Okay, Sin's going to ball up any access, uh, uh, any excess uh, uh, bedroll in his hand to make it tighter. And then he's going to take his other hand and grab his hand axe and he's going to swing at the head of this thing. Okay. Uh, I will I will go ahead and give you uh, inspiration for the bedroll usage. I will say... From the last bite attack that it made, some of the uh, t- teeth teeth marks and uh, poisonous uh, liquid that comes from its er, uh, secretion coming from its mouth is going to end up damaging your bedroll, but it still works fine just now for what you're trying to do. Okay, you got my bedroll. Yeah, I don't sleep. <laughs> the good use of a bedroll. They only had one bet. <laughs> uh, that is going to miss. That's what I figured. Okay, since my other hand is occupied, that would be the turn. I'm just going to keep holding them. Okay. Tendi, you are in front of the large metal doors. You see, you turn back uh, just moments, seconds before Lee Austin is sort of frozen in the same petrified state as the large giant or the giant spider and the various uh, statues that surround you. You can tell me. I don't know if I'm not supposed to know. Petrification isn't death, right? It's just like a, a status situation. Like it has to be healed by a certain spell that we don't have, but he's not dead. Right. right, petrification is yeah. Petrification is like uh, carbonite being frozen in carbonite. <gasps> no, Han Solo. Yeah. I know. Um, I forgot to roll Jolene's con save. Uh, oh. Looks like she passed though. Yep, she she's good. Oh thank goodness. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tendi's gonna do a big hiss at the basilisk that's still alive. So it has to, um, give me a wisdom saving throw. 
wisdom saving throw. Yeah. I don't think this boy's too smart. Nope. He's gonna go for right. Nope. Uh, he's gonna take 3d6 psychic damage. Whew. Is it slash R or slash roll? It's slash R. I mean, it, or slash roll. It's whichever. Uh, he's going to take 10 psychic damage and has to immediately move further from me. Okay. Uh, it takes the 10 psychic damage, but since it is currently grappled, its speed is zero. So it tries to back away from the source of where it's hearing this, but it cannot because it is currently being held. Ah, suck it. Um... Yeah, and I have to actively not move. And I'm not gonna. I think I'm done. Okay. I can't go fast again until I stop moving, so I have to not move now. Right. Hey, Jordan. Yeah? I've got to move Wicket at the end of my turn. Can I move him? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um. The Basilisk inside the bed. Bartholomew the Basilisk inside the bedroll. Uh is going to again attempt to um, free itself it's going to it's going to it's going to bite before it tries to free itself out uh, it, given its current state it's going to be with disadvantage again against sin uh, does a, f a 15 hit 15 is the armor class okay so it finds it it just so happens to find a, a thinner part of the bedroll and it like its teeth manage to serrate through it and latch onto your arm and bite onto you for 10 piercing and three poison damage as its mucus kind of starts to um, drip down your arm and uh, kind of cause irritation around the uh, the wound itself. Uh, it's not going to, it can't do anything else. Before we get to Prudence, now it is 9.36, so we're going to need to end soon. Uh, relatively soon, these dogs get up at 5. But I can stay on until like 10. Okay. Um, let me see, let me do this real quick. Uh, all right, we'll go to Prudence. We'll probably do one more round. Um, now you... that this unnamed basilisk is dead, Prudence is going to move to the next one. You cannot move. You are currently restrained. Oh. Your feet is rocks. Sin, pick me up. Put me in front of you. Let me punch. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of busy. <laughs> <laughs> this big monster. Eh? 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 Just, just the monster that is like teeth deep in him. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I guess can I? What is the reach on my forearm? Uh, your. Because your pole arm is essentially a quarter staff, right? Oh yeah, quarter yeah. staff. Sorry. So uh, quarter staff. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's. I think it's just fi uh, five feet. You, your daggers have a range. I don't know. Oh, that so. was my next go okay. to. Uh, I guess I'll throw. How many daggers can I throw? Uh, you'd be able to th throw. Let's see. You can you can so what you would do is when you're two weapon fighting you can use your attack action and attack with a light melee weapon, aka dagger, and throw it. Then you can use your bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon that you're holding in the other hand. So attack action, bonus action, you can throw two daggers. You just wouldn't add your ability modifier to the second to the bonus uh, bonus attack. I understand. Um, and the range on it's twenty feet, so you're well within range to throw it. 
and do attack her. Eleven. Uh, it as it whips around, it gets caught in the bedroll and like the hilt of it, and it kind of flies over uh, five feet next to it on the ground. Seventeen. The other one manages to stick through the bedroll in, into its into its skull. Uh, as you roll for damage, and uh, Jolene, Jolene blows a bit of cold air, it looks like, and adds uh, icy damage to that cold dagger. Frost, <laughs> fr frosty kiss. I love frosties. Well, yeah, no, they're good. If a strawberry frosty is now out, I oh my god! I haven't had one yet. I haven't had it either because I like chocolate, but Me too. Uh, it does not look good. You see, from the incision of the uh, of the dagger into the head of the basilisk, and it whips around. You see, kind of the bedroll start to soak with a bit of that dark greenish blue ichor. That's it. All right, we go to Mar uh, Mara. Con save. Con save. I need to make. One. Oh yeah 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 yeah. You got to make uh, since you are restrained, you have to at the end of your turn you have to make another Constitution save uh, to avoid being petrified. You gotta get higher than a twelve. You do. Oh, you, you don't have bardic inspiration anymore, but are you regularly inspired? Uh, yeah. I will use my inspiration. That sounds like a good idea, because that other roll was a 12. So you, uh, feeling a bit inspired from nailing a uh, writhing basilisk square in the head with a throw that could only be rivaled by the ones at the Midsummer Fair. Uh, you can shake, shake off the feeling as you kind of force your will down in the stony feet that you once have are now metal once more. Ain't nobody gonna break my stride. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Nicely done. So, uh, so yeah. Now we'll go to Mara. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Can't read all this time. Fucking screen. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over here. Shit. So I move and then I'm going to I have uh my flame in my hand. So I'm gonna throw it at it. Um which is whoops, wrong window. Oh fuck. Oh damn it. I meant to use my inspiration. You can. And I forgot to say it first. No, I forgot to say it first. What, to use your inspiration? Yeah. I haven't looked to see whether or not you hit yet, and I haven't said whether or not it hits or misses. That's that, that's why it gives you the chance to, to to see in advance that you rolled what you rolled, and you could say, I use inspiration, if you haven't. Oh. I thought we were supposed to say it and then roll. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't inspiration is something you can spend after your main roll. Okay. So I use my inspiration for 
to get the 23. Okay. Uh, 23 is definitely going to hit. You deal three fire damage to it. Yep. All right. Uh, Sin, the good news is it was a great move with the bedroll. The bad news is, is, uh, you think it might be catching on fire. It's on fire! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's still not going to get... It's still not going to get rid of the bedroll yet, but uh, I just you're going to lose the bedroll anyway, so it just it catches on it catches on fire in one corner of it. Um, this was the only green one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? Can I get it? Do I get a second action? Uh, no, you're if it's a if it's a spell like a cantrip when it's casting time one action. You have a bonus action if you have something that can be done that way. I think my only bonus action is wild shape. Go let me look. That's it. Yes, that's it. Okay. Alright, we go to Jolene. Jolene, Jolene. Jolene's gonna step up and take a little uh, bitey bite. Uh, 23, I assume hits for 80 piercing. 23 does. How does Jolene uh, tear into and end the life of this basilisk? <laughs> She uh, jumps up and grabs it right in its eye and pops its eye with her teeth. Oh boy. Alright. Uh, its eye is popped. It falls limp to the floor and finishes engulfing. Uh, the bedroll finishes getting engulfed in flames as, uh, as it lies bodily uh, mute on, along the floor. Can I pick up the eyeball? The one that got eaten, basically? Oh, I thought she just ripped it out. There's, there's three other eyeballs between the two of them. There is, yeah. <laughs> Poppy is going to turn around and hug Leofstone, made of stone. Leofstone, you mean? Leofstone. Uh, and she's going to say kind of under her breath. Help him. You helped me, so help him. I'll do whatever you want, just save him, please. I'm trying to reach out towards whoever saved Poppy before. Give me a moment here. Uh, no. What about you? Oh, wait, hold on. What about you? No. Um... Oh, what about you? Sorry, there's many characters I have to look through right now. You, you don't hear anything. No, Jordan, why? <laughs> no, well, Poppy just cries. <laughs> you can't call people around dinner time. They won't answer. Uh, oh, no. It's 
It's not a business day. <laughs> the closest person. Prudence. That's me. Make a perception check. Okay. The basilisk gonna explode. Oh, the basilisk explodes. Uh, no. Okay, no. Uh, as kind of looking from perhaps maybe Poppy kind of crying at Lee Austin's uh, shins. Uh, there's no current imminent danger, and you look. You kind of look around at the bodies of the two. Uh, basilisk, and I think you were wanting to try to get an eye, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, the first thing you notice is that in order to, uh, you, you immediately recall the, a bit like the mention from Beckett that you are able to possibly harvest things from creatures, um, Monster. to, to sell at, uh, sell back at the, uh, Drawing scopper for additional profit, but that quickly leaves your mind as you notice the broken pinky of the statue hurled by Lee Austin, and you see the black, the kind of the blackish blue green ichor blood that is sort of spilling out from. Uh, the basilisk that you had flipped over and uh, jumped over and stabbed, and you and you notice that there is a uh, sort of a slight hiss, like oil on water, except it's more acid on blood. It this acid leaks out from uh, from inside of the basilisk, and quickly since it's more uh, nimble and uh, thinner, it quickly goes over the blood and is the first to touch the stone pinky which then you see a bit of uh, red blood come from the bottom of the pinky and the stone pinky ends up slowly changing back into a bloodless uh, blood drained at this point life like flesh pinky Sin, help me carry the basilisk. Uh, uh, okay. Quickly, quickly. Uh, Sin uh, grabs the basilisk. We drag it over to Lee Austin. Okay, you drag the first one that downed uh, over to Lee Austin, and what do you do? We smear it on his body. <laughs> she just like takes it and rubs it on him as if it's a bomb. Okay. Uh, it doesn't smell great, and it. But uh, as you begin to smear, you your hands move quickly to cover as much space as possible. You don't really pay attention to where you've already been. You're going to places you know aren't currently covered. So you guys are, um, you know, I, I imagine sin. You're probably holding the basilisk and like letting the blood drip down as uh, prudence kind of wipes and patches and uh, around and uh, all over Lee Austin. Uh, all over Lee Austin. Some of it Mara gets... Mara takes her blindfold off and looks at this and is like, oh my god. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, you see... Yeah, now, now you can see a petrified Lee Austin. Um, some of it gets on Poppy. Poppy, you think it's... I'm still holding on to Craig. <laughs> uh, just dripping down her face. Prudence tells you like move your arm for a second and like Poppy doesn't pay any attention uh, and slowly but surely uh, Lee Austin becomes less stone and more flesh although you are uh, absolutely covered head to toe in a very smelly stings the nostrils it's like sex panther if they made a prank version um and it's it's just blood and gore from top to bottom but you are able to draw breath and you are no longer petrified 
Prudence throws her arms around the Austin's neck and hugs him. Oh. How do you look? Leofson's blinking, but they're like his eyes are quite like blinking at the same time. They're kind of just blinking on their own. And he looks between them. <laughs> Pixar blink. I told you not to look at it. <laughs> I had to see where I was throwing it. He kind of puts like he kind of puts a hand in his head, but then like pats Pop Poppy's head and pop pats Prudence's back. By the, By the way, way Poppy's, Poppy's not letting go. go. You're gonna have to, like, drag her or something. <laughs> she can just sit on his butt and just walk around. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Baby. Prudence, um, doesn't stop there. She begins to take more blood and go around to the other statues in the room. And repeat the process, dragging Sin along behind her. Uh, you have basically, so for, before, before you do that, I want to point out you have base you have used the blood and, or the, whatever is inside this basilisk that you're not sure did it, but you know, from firsthand experience that, uh, this one is completely drained dry. The other one okay. is still, t rubs his body. <laughs> not necessarily, uh, the other one, the other basilisk is um, a bit charred on the outside now, but is still harvestable. Okay, can I harvest the blood? Uh, there are certain bits of it that you can certainly harvest, yes. Is this Sin good at harvest? I feel like that's a thing, right? That was something that I wanted Sin to, uh, to try mm. to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it takes, but... So... So now we, yeah, real, real quick, we'll just go over, uh, well, we can cover, um, we can cover that the big, the, at the top of the next, uh, the next one. Cause we, we should go over as the first possible creature you could harvest stuff from. We should go into detail on that. Um, can we like animate like just the leg? Can we put, is there any more blood left? To put on the spider and not like bring it back to life, but like just take his leg. <laughs> okay, you you want to take his leg? <laughs> yeah, I want to take his leg. You, I mean, you could just break it off and then do it later. Okay. But you could. Farm That's it. Head that way. Um. We're going, going to the other room. Let me see. Sin. And what is uh what's Jolene's passive perception? Uh, Twelve. Okay. I think. Yeah. Sin. I'll end it on this note. As you kind of come back to and start to inspect this basilisk, uh, to see the from going from no prior experience of of harvesting it to making sure that you gather things you believe would be useful you are distracted just for a brief moment as you think you hear the sound of footsteps on cobwebs similar to when you were all were walking through here uh and that's where we will end this episode of midgard